Okay, now I start with the actual Ray Fire tutorial. First of all, I want to show you what I have in my scene with the new Scene Explorer. It's more or less like an outliner, like in Maya. And here I have my objects which I want to use in my simulation. So I will open up my demo version of Ray Fire. And demo launch. And this is what the interface of Ray Fire looks like. This is now everything standard. I first of all quickly want to explain what the main tabs in Rayfire do. So dynamic impact objects. Here you add your objects which you want to be shattered. In the static kinematic it's like a passive object box where you can add your objects which are in the simulation but they are not being considered. So they're just passive objects can bounce off of them. The sleeping objects, which we will use in this tutorial, is more or less like the dynamic, but objects are sleeping or frozen until they are being confronted with an animated object. And below that you have material presets, which we will use for my tutorial. You have got heavy metal, glass, bricks, rubber, wood, ice, all that stuff you probably need for materials. In the physics tab you have this is where the simulation starts, physical options. This is now just for your scene where your start frame is because my ball is being animated around 50. I want the start frame of the simulation to start at 50, which is also being um, blocked because of the demo version, but 50 is just fine for this tutorial. The sub steps is how many um, steps in between frames will be simulated. This is the gravity slider time scales for increasing or decreasing the simulation effect. The properties for the simulation here you can add specific objects um, or properties for your simulation. For instance, um, these are probably off on default. You can deactivate animated objects so it will consider your keyframes, which I want in this tutorial, so I turn that one on because my ball is being animated with keyframes and it should be therefore deactivated. But I want to activate it later on when it's hitting the glass. I want to activate it by a geometry which I will still have to model. So I want this one to be on. So when the ball intersects my geometry, which is still not here yet, then it's being considered in the simulation and will be activated. Activate by mouse, you have to insert any number in here except zero for that to work. So you can press shift and with your cursor you can go over objects and then they are being activated in the simulation. The same goes for force. You can use a, or create a force field and activate your animation objects by force. Below that you've got demo demolition, demolition properties, which is on default off like this one too. And demolish means objects are being demolished within a simulation, not beforehand, but within. So when the ball is being simulated and it hits the glass, then only the glass should be shattered. And this is what this one does. So turn that one on. Depth level is how often one piece can be shattered. So the first shattering takes place. Then I've got a shard here. And at a depth level of two, the shard is being shattered again. If you upset Put that to three the shattered piece which is way smaller now will be shattered again so this is very processing intensive so keep this one first for testing very low time delay is a time delay between shattering levels if you set this a high number then it will take a long time before the first shattered piece will be shattered again that's that fragments this is now interesting this is how your mesh is being fragmented or shattered Voronoi shattering is more like safety glass or what else is there? It's probably more or less only safety glass or concrete and stuff like that will be shattered with a Voronoi. Uh, the Pro Boolean is more like an irregular shape, which is more what I want for glass to um, be shattered with. So I want it to be irregular. I can quickly just show you how irregular looks like. If I just add my first windshield to my dynamic, I frame it and press F4 for wireframe. 
and if I now go to fragments and click fragment you can see it's being shattered and now you can see what each does so you can go to manage and delete and it's like an undo function you can go to Voronoi irregular fragment that and it looks more regular which is not what glass really does so I like to use the irregular but for the tutorial I want to to be shattered where the ball hits so you can use that for impact point and I just reduce the number let's say to 5 and you can see my shards are being created and then you can you can play around with these values here chaos I'm not super sure what each one does but you can as you can see now what it does it's pretty you can quickly see what everything does oops fragment you can see chaos makes very irregular shapes detailization let's see what that does That's, so you get more details in the line if the value is high so I just bump that up and you can see it's it's a round shape more it's not probably exactly what you want but it's getting closer let's increase the noise a bit fragment again now this is more or less like glass or it's it's very closer than the Voronoi this one looks pretty nice actually so you can increase iterations the more iterations the more fragments you get and let's reduce the chaos a bit now this, is, this looks nice so that's what fragmentation does so I just remove this one quickly add my objects to my simulation so I want the glass because I don't want them to start immediately when the simulation starts. I want them to be a sleeping object. So they will be only s simulated when they hit or when they are being hit by something. So I want them to be sleeping objects. And the ball. Oh, first I have to click delete, yeah. Damn. Okay, because I now shattered my glass and still in here. I just hit delete now. But everything should work like it should. The glass is in here, my, my sphere is here, which is the ball. Just being animated and I want that to be a dynamic object. But because I changed my properties for that, it will be deactivated. But only activated via geometry. So first of all I have to model my geometry. It just it can just be a simple box where the ball is being passed through so I'm more or less side view now I can see where I should position it probably around here so when the ball hits the geometry which is here it's being added to my simulation and then it should go through the window so now you have to add the geometry to your simulation properties list add and it's now in here now it should work you can hide it if you want if it's um, not in the view and you can first of all make a preview of that let's see if the ball is being added it is as you can see now it did fly right through the window and then let's change my settings for my object so the ball should be like a rubber which is already set it's standard I think ports rock just change that to rubber for my static objects I don't have any in here but there should be a dense rock and the glass should be set to glass so now I have to add my objects which are dynamic static dynamic sorry so I don't want the frame and the windowsill to be in the simulation because they are very dense meshes and the simulation for them is very uh, processor intensive so I would like to model simpler objects for those so first of all I quickly just model a box again and position it here where it should be something like here go to my settings of the box and just quickly go to or set it to where the shape should be something like this it's nice probably a bit too long doesn't have to be that accurate but it should work and 
now I have to model the frame quickly. I model it from a, a torus. The settings are 404 and then you have to rotate it by 45 so you get a, a cube from that and rotate it by 45 again and then by 90. So now it should match my framing. I just have to change my vertices for that. So to do that, you convert it to a poly, go to vertex, vertex mode, and press, or go into the front view quickly. And then you can very quickly adjust your vertices to fit my window frame. And then you should have a nice working frame. And I want to add these two objects, the box and my torus to my static objects. So they are already in my static objects. So I just select the wall and the floor, add them as well. Okay, let's see what my simulation does now if I preview it. And now, if you want window to be fragmented during simulation, you, you can only use the bake function. Preview won't work with that. So go to demolition and turn that to on. And that's probably all you have to do. But if you have preview now again, it will be automatically turned off. But you, now you have to go and bake your simulation. So let's hit the bake button. And now it should be shattered as you can see here. Okay, now the simulation is done. You can see now some wireframes in here, but it's just because I've got my wireframe enabled. If it's off, you won't see them. So now you can see the ball hits my window. It's being shattered. All the glass pieces fly into my room, which is exactly what I want. The ball bounces. There's some glass sticking on the windowsill and on the window frame. It's actually a nice animation. If you can look, once you see it from outside, you can see the ball is hitting the windows, some are falling outside and the rest is inside. So if you are happy with your animation or simulation, you can save them and I show you now how to export your shards to Maya. So you just have to select your glass and the ball because the ball is being reanimated. So you select the bug, uh, the glass, everything which has a glass namespace, glass and the spheres. So now you and now you want to send them to Maya. So you can now export them, or you can just use a super nice function send to and to Maya and update current scene. You can see it's very a very nice way to work because. It's being updated immediately in Maya and it's working. It's very nice. Obviously now you don't have your windows anymore but you can just um, unhide them here, hide those two and now it should work I think. Okay, You probably have to hide them when the window is being shattered. Okay, from 69 to 70, the window is being shattered. So I want to hide them at 69. So I make a um, visibility key for my glass here when it should be on. On 69, oh, I'm one frame early. So just key it again and go to 70 and then set this one to zero and key that. So now it's working. So it's a glass all the time and when the ball hits, the other glass is being hidden and you can see all the shards flying in my scene. You can now group everything if you like to and call this one ray fire ray fire sim or whatever you want to. And this is how you get your shattering back to Maya.